theme. There we go. Got her. Ow. <laughs> Hello, science enthusiasts. Welcome to Science Chat. Every week we bring an amazing expert to enthrall you with their area of knowledge. We're super excited tonight. We have Dr. Uh, Keteki Ganti, who's with us today, who's a virologist. Um, and we're going to start off with a little game called Can You Beat the Doc? <laughs> so up in the nest, you'll notice that there is a link to Kahoot. And uh, if you click on the link, you can sign in and you can. we're going to play a little trivia game. Um, Doc, how are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm very well. A little tired. It's been a very, very long day, but I'm very good. Were, so you, were, you, doing, were you doing research? Were you teaching today? Uh, what was up? What, what, what was going on today for you? Oh, research. Lots, lots of, exp it was a long experiment and it just got delayed. And so it just took longer than I thought it would. And so, yeah, I, I just got home like half hour ago. So oh, Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So if you are here and you'd like to play the game, it's up in the nest. We'll get started. I'm going to go through it pretty quickly. So I think we'll get started right away. And it's mm -hmm. called, Can You Beat the Doc? And then we'll do the little mini interview and then we'll open up the floor to questions. Okay. Beat the Doc, September 13th. If you've been here for Pet Chat, you know what this is about. Okay, question number one. The largest virus in the world is Mimi virus, adenovirus, coronavirus, norovirus. Okay, which one is the largest virus in the world? Three seconds, two seconds, one second. All right, it's the Mimi virus. Did you get that one, Doc? Mm -hmm. You did? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Rev, you're still in here. Rev is number two. Momzilla is number three. Okay. Here we go. Next question. Prior to the eradication of smallpox, what was the fatality rate in humans that got it? Roughly one in three. Roughly one in a hundred. Roughly one in ten. Roughly one in a thousand. What was the fatality rate of humans that got smallpox? Five seconds, three, two, one. It was a horrific one in three. Yeah. It wasn't, yeah. it, isn't that awful? I did yeah. not know that. I didn't yeah. know. No. Sorry, go ahead, Doc. No, I was saying it was really bad. Oh yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. that is really bad. Mm -hmm. Doc's in first place. Sarah, Silky, mm -hmm. Lexi, and Kathy's in, coming up, okay. True or false, antibiotics are effective against the virus. True or false, antibiotics are... Oh, okay, that was over quickly. That's false. <laughs> okay, the doc is on fire. You guys are not beating the doc tonight, everybody. Silky, you're doing okay. Number two, we got uh, Sarah, Kathy, and Paula. So here we go. Next question. The virus, this virus was the virus that inspired the movie Contagion. Hmm, mm, coronavirus. Kimpto, Ebola, Nipah virus. What was the virus that inspired the movie Contagion? That was it. Okay. It was the Nipah virus, not yeah. Ebola. Not Ebola. Yeah, Ebola was actually, just fun fact, uh, was the virus they actually showed in the movie Outbreak. Mm-hmm. The yeah. one that was making everybody bleed, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, they call it something different in the movie, but what they actually show is Ebola. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Did you get that one, Doc? You did. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is a fun game for me because the Doc is just destroying everybody. Okay. If you don't get treatment for rabies, what is the chance of death? 50%? 80%? 20%, 100%. If you don't get treatment for rabies, what is the chance of death? It is certain death. 100% yeah. you will die. Mm -hmm. Yep. That is scary. Yeah. But it is pretty treatable, right? Like the, yes. the yeah, yes. like it is treatable now. Yes. Rev got third place. 
In second place with three out of five, we have Silky. And did we beat the doc tonight? The answer is no. <laughs> five out of five, the virologist cleans up on did you, can you beat the doc? So that's for everybody. And a cheer for the doctor. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. Yeah, it is. I think we're going to do it every, every space. It's kind of fun. That's it gets awesome. it, it gets everybody involved. You learn a yeah. little bit. Yeah. So yeah. if you're just joining us for science chat, um, how it works is I do a little mini interview and then um, we we throw to the audience for questions they might have. So the first thing, just to, for everybody to get to know you a little bit more, um, mm-hmm. could you tell everybody what your training in science is? OK, um, so I got my bachelor's degree um, in biotechnology and my master's degree in virology and my PhD in virology. And currently I have done six years of postdoctoral training, mm-hmm. uh, studying influenza, and that is still my current field of field of study. So I currently study influenza viruses. So doc, when you were little, were you, did you love science? Did you like like microscopy? Like what was the thing that, how, how did you get into all in on viruses? Yeah, so when I was actually when I was a little, I wanted to be an archaeologist. Oh, and then and then that sort of I sort of I I mean I still would still love to do it, but um, <laughs> then I got really fascinated. Also, I for a, for a bit there, I wanted to be a paleontologist because dinosaurs are awesome and like, yeah, yeah. So and I really would like thought I, that would be cool to study. Um, dinosaurs and like look up fossils and stuff um <laughs> but yeah i mean i got interested in uh, biomedical sciences and virology in particular um because i had a great teacher and who really made like biology super interesting and um viruses are super cool um they are fascinating things and they do amazing things in a host system um and we learn a lot actually about how the body works about how a lot of things happen in our own body through virus through studying viruses and the diseases they cause and it's it's fascinating and we learn something every day and there's still so many things we don't know and it's it's awesome um i guess i just always like to learn new things and it just sort of felt natural being here. So with, with your, your study with influenza, Oh, first off, um, Mm -hmm. did, did I catch that right? You wanted to be an archeologist? Yes. Oh, this didn't work. That's too bad. There we go. Got something for you. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) The, the mummy still remains to this day. One of my favorite movies. Oh yeah. yeah, Nice. Yes. Yes. No, you're just you're an archaeologist, but you're studying. Well, you're you're a type of scientist that's studying tiny, tiny ancient organisms because like viruses are ancient, are they not? They're like, yes, who knows how long they've been around? Yeah. And most viruses have evolved over millions of years along with their hosts. It's why they're so good at, you know, stupid viruses. I know, right? Um, <laughs> I mean, yes, but also, like, if it wasn't there, I'd be out of a job. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but they're great. I mean, they're great from an academic purposes purpose and a point of view, but not so great because they make people sick. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So, your study with your university, what are you researching right now? Um, is it It's with influenza, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Could, yeah. You, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so a lot of my work focuses on, uh, so influenza, just as a primer, influenza is a virus uh, that infects humans, as we all know. We have a flu season every year. Mm-hmm. and uh, But it also infects a wide range of birds. It infects a wide range of other mammalian hosts. It infects sea creatures. So influenza is found in a lot of different animals, uh, along with humans. Um so the the deal with the, the flu is and the reason you have to get a flu shot every year is because there are tiny changes that happen in this virus. It's very sneaky 
and it changes just a little bit enough each year that the vaccine you took last year is not really completely effective against the viruses this year. So you need to just go and update, you know, uh, your body and just give it the new information it needs to sort of help you not get sick this year. Um, but um, the, the, because in flu infects so many different hosts, uh, some of sometimes, very rarely, you have flu viruses that can jump from one host to the other. And sometimes when that happens, uh, it can cause a pandemic. Oh, that, so, so you're speaking of like the coronavirus pandemic, the COVID-19. Similar. Yeah, exactly. So I think if a lot of people would remember the 2009 pandemic, which was the swine flu, which was colloquially called the swine flu pandemic mm -hmm. in 2009, that was an influenza pandemic. Um, that happened because a virus jumped from pigs to humans and the pigs initially got infected by multiple viruses from birds. So it basically came from birds to pigs to humans. So, um, yeah, so, and that virus had never been seen by the human population before, uh, which is why so many people got sick. Hmm. Um, yeah, so I study a lot of how that happens, is that how, what are the certain things that would that the virus needs to do to make that jump and why that happens and how can we stop it and what other information do we need to prevent that from happening? So that is what I study. So I have a, I have a couple questions for you. Um, <laughs> one is just about influenza itself. Yeah. Why, why is it cyclical? Like I've heard so many different things like, um, it's cyclical because in the winter everybody's inside more. So there's a greater chance of spreading it to mm. it might travel with birds what's is there an idea yeah. why yeah. okay yeah so there is there is a lot of information on the seasonality of flu yeah um a lot of it has to do with just environmental conditions so uh we have a lot of data showing um that it's actually data from my boss like she's the one who did this work um and it shows that the flu virus spreads the most in dry and cold temperatures. Uh, so it's why the, there is a flu season in like temperate zones during the winter because it's dry and it's cold. Mm -hmm. So the hotter it gets and the more, more humid it gets, the less transmissible flu is. Hmm. Um, yeah. And also, obviously, it is a question of indoors, you're inside, you're gathering more there's more it's just a density thing also so you're more likely to spread it from one person to the other plus you're going to like if somebody is sneeze is having cough or whatever you can like spread it around like you know on like surfaces you touch them um yeah so uh it's it's a it's a question of contact and it is a question of temperature and humidity okay so we just got to hang out in deserts to avoid these these viruses. I get, I guess. You won't avoid all of them. You might avoid the flu. You might. You're not going to avoid the rest of them. Oh no! Right, yeah. because that's just the flu. <laughs> yeah, we have so many of them. Oh, these uh, viruses! Hey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, it's it's also why it was very um, sort of uh, interesting to see when the when the COVID pandemic hit and in like 2020 when people were, uh, when there was a lockdown and people were taking a lot of precautions and, you know, wearing masks, you know, social distancing and sanitizing and all of that, the flu rates, flu cases dropped completely. The U S did not see, U S only saw, I want to say about like hundred to some cases mm -hmm. of flu that Sa year. Same with Canada. There was no flu season yeah, to be speak no of. Flu. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's why it's not that the flu didn't, wasn't circulating. It just that because people were taking preventative measures, people didn't get sick. Mm -hmm. So it dropped from like 50,000 cases a year to like hundred something. Hmm. So, yeah. So it, it's just a question. Like if you just do that every year, you will not get sick. It has nothing to do with that. Oh, it, the flu didn't decide to take a break because COVID was there. <laughs> it's it like COVID takeover. We're, we're done here. Yeah, that's hmm. not happening. That's hmm. not how it works. And so, yeah, 
Huh. Um, but yeah, it, it's just people were just being careful and that was enough to keep it at bay. So with what you study with how these viruses come about, is it just bad luck? Like if the wrong, I don't know, whatever, like raccoon licks a pig, <laughs> then we get like raccoon pig virus or something like I that. <laughs> like, like, is it just like random chance that this can happen or is it happening all the time? And we've just been really lucky that it hasn't happened sooner than the last, the swine flu one. Like, is it always going to happen? Is it bad luck? I just, I'm, that's one question that I, I puzzle about. Yeah, so it's it's a very interesting question, and it's uh, it's something that so pandemics are rare, right? Mm. And and we've only had uh, four pandemics in the last century, um, and that is because um, there is a lot of there are a lot of steps that need to happen before a completely novel virus is introduced into the human population, and that is very it's why it's so rare because. Everything has to happen exactly right, and it, and it for it to make any sort of impact in that sense, right? Hmm. So, and this is not, and this doesn't happen overnight. It's happening over like decades. It this is a process that it's a lot of like trial and error. Like the virus undergoes a lot of trial and error when it's replicating, mm-hmm. and sometimes like it finds the right combination, but that right combination also needs to get passed on. And like be sustained in the in the existing virus population that is already out there, and sometimes it happens that all of the stars align and like and you get this virus that's so much better than everything else that's currently there, and it takes over, and that's how you get a pandemic because the human population has never seen anything like it before, so hmm. it's completely new, and so your body does doesn't know what to do with it. Because it's you've never seen it before. So if you think of an example, we were we had the question about smallpox, and so the the um, if smallpox made a, an emergence back again now, we would all be sick. We'd we be so. I was, you know, I am terrified of that, Doc. Like it is an awful thought. It's an awful because awful like I don't I don't have immunity to smallpox. Would no. even the people who got inoculated? Would they still have immunity or would that have yes. waned? Okay, they would? No, yes. Okay. So the people who got the people who got the smallpox vaccine, yeah. they would be immune to it, yes. Okay. But every anybody born after I don't know I I, I think they start <laughs> inoc- they stopped immunizing for smallpox like in the seventies, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So anybody born after that is going to be completely naive. So with a 30 percent mortality rate, that is terrifying. Yeah, it's awful. It's <laughs> an awful, awful thing. Yeah. So um, but the thing is that smallpox still remains. Uh, also, another fun fact is the only virus to be completely eradicated. Huh. It's the only one. The world and just got its poop in a group like back in the yeah, day. Like, oh. yeah, basically nobody was complaining about why they have to go take a shot and why is this like this and who suddenly decided to make you king and give me this (laughs) shot nobody nobody was doing that and so everybody got vaccinated and because everybody got vaccinated smallpox doesn't exist anymore but did but smallpox didn't like mutate like coronavirus the coronavirus has changed and changed and changed um so like the yeah. is that a little yeah. different though like compared to the smallpox virus? Um yes, it's a little different but the concept is still the same. Yeah. No yeah. virus can sustain itself without a host. And mm-hmm. that period, that is any virus, anything it needs a host. It cannot sustain outside of the host. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if it's the flu, it doesn't matter if it's the coronavirus, it doesn't matter if it is a herpes, it doesn't matter which virus it is. It cannot replicate and it cannot sustain itself outside the host body. Hmm. So if you are vaccinated and if you're immune to it, you're not going to transmit it to somebody else. And if everybody is vaccinated, there is nowhere for it to go. So it will die out. Hmm. So that that is the thing. See, the thing is that there are different classes of viruses. Some of them evolve faster than others an example is of course the flu the flu 
yeah, some of them don't, and it just it's just they're slower, and and that is a that is the nature of the virus. It's just slower, um, but the key is still always vaccination preventative measures are always any day better than any sort of therapy we can come up with. Mm, prevention versus like uh, pres- prescription. Yeah, like it's always, I mean, obviously, ideally, we would like to have very good antivirals mm-hmm. and therapeutic implications that are there. And we want to, it's why so much research goes into it to develop drugs and treatment options for any viral disease. And we, because we want it. Um, but ideally, we would not, we would like to reduce the number of people who get infected in the first place mm-hmm. because it completely, it, it reduces the burden on hospital systems, on, you know, care facilities, on so many other things. It just reduces the burden and it's much better to take care. It's, it's You're able to give better care to the people who are not able to avoid it rather than just people just getting sick because they refuse to get vaccinated. Mm-hmm. So with the with the flu vaccine, um, yeah. I think Canada is rolling them out pretty quick. Yeah. Do, do do virologists like yourself do you get together and or is there like a governing body that kind of yeah? Because you have to guess, you have to make a really good educated guess based on yeah. data what the predominant flu is going to be. Because there's a is, is am I not am I correct? There's a, could be a yes. bunch of different strains of them yes. run run in muck. Okay. You are you are correct. Okay. So basically, the governing body is the World Health Organization. Okay. So the World Health Organization has a flu division, um, and what they do is they conduct surveillance for influenza strains that are circulating all over the world. So there are uh, influenza centers, um, the surveillance centers that are present in every. Um, Uh, They're present in every hemisphere and they're present in like, so there's one in Australia, there's one in the US, there's one in India, there's one, you know, Mm -hmm. they're in a bunch of places. And so for every region, they have their own collaborating center. So what they do is they collect data from all the labs that are doing surveillance in basically what happens is throughout the year, there are people whose only task is to go and swab birds. And basically, they collect bird poop. <laughs> oh, no. And I'm not joking. It, it, it's literally what they do. Yeah. Is they swap birds all over wherever their region is, and they scan for what, what flu they have. So once we have all of that data from everywhere, we get some sort of consensus about what are the currently dominating circulating strains in bird populations, in swine populations, in human populations. And we have all of this data. And then... The, there is a vaccine group that is part of the WHO then then decides, okay, this year's vaccines need to be updated and we need to change this, this and that. Or, oh, there's not really that much of a difference. We can keep the vaccines the same as last year. So it, it, it depends. And that's you. They use that information to mm-hmm. give you this answer. And that's how your um, and that information then goes to the uh, vaccine manufacturers who then make your flu shot <laughs> every year. And this happens every single year. Okay, so that's maybe where I was getting confused with birds. Because uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's the birds that we look to to see what flu is circulating. Not necessarily that's how the flu moves from northern to southern hemisphere. No, the flu does move from migrate. So birds that migrate yeah. will carry yeah. flu with them from one place to the other. Okay, that so is- that is true. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, it is. That, that's how it works. And uh, so also like. So um, the Canada geese are just the worst in reality. Yeah, they are the worst. Because not only are they super annoying and poop everywhere, they bring the yeah. flus to the United States and Mexico and then back up to yeah. Canada. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's the reality. It's migrating birds are actually. Uh, so there is an actual whole field of study that's, that looks at uh, flyways and migratory bird flyways to, mm-hmm. to track how the flu, which flu strains are going where. Mm-hmm. So there are uh, ornithologists and people who study uh, birds and wi- waterfowl and poultry because what also happens is there are these birds and they're carrying flu and they're flying over everywhere. Then they sometimes like 
find a pond which is near a farm and they poop there and then the poultry pick that up so now the poultry are infected and the poultry are around pigs and the pigs get it and the pigs are around the humans and then you know you have it's this sort of chain of transmission i'm making i'm simplifying it a lot it's not always like that right okay <laughs> yeah. but, it doesn't um, always go canada goose chicken pig farmer joe me yeah okay yeah, I mean, but it does, but that has happened before. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, oh my goodness. Um, yeah, because like waterfowl are uh, carry all types of flu. They carry every possible subtype of flu. Every every flu that's possible, the waterfowl will have it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Good. Interesting group. thing: there are some that are like found in bats. Yeah. We found, we found some in bats. Do, but do do bats migrate though, or do they kind of stay around there? I'd have to ask Dr. Kristen Lear. Around. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not very familiar with like bat migration. But if you have a Canada goose hanging around a bat colony, <laughs> oh my god, this is bananas, Doc. Yeah, yeah, oh. but it happens. I guess right. It's it's it's, it's how it spreads. It's yeah, how it spreads. It's how it spreads. Huh. The thing is, though, you have to imagine that there are so many obstructions and like barriers in the middle of all of that. Um, it is why, like, serious pandemics, like pandemics, are rare. It's mm-hmm. because of all of that because it's not easy for a bird virus to get into even a poultry or to get into a pig. It's it's not that simple. Like. They are not adapted to that host. So usually they don't do very well. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are a lot of barriers. So it's why you don't have pandemics every other year. Hmm. Lucky us, huh? Yeah, lucky. I don't want to go yeah. through this all over again in another it's decade possible. or something like this. It's, you know, yeah. Just just dealing with no toilet paper at Costco. That was that was stressful <laughs> enough. Um, I, don't get it. I, don't get the, I don't get why people freak out over the toilet paper. I don't know. I don't know. Costco was out of toilet paper and it was out of maple syrup. And that was a uniquely Canadian problem. But I'll tell you, we were pretty frustrated that Costco was out of maple syrup because I'm not eating any other maple syrup or any other syrup on pancakes. Not happening. Um, I I, I can understand that when you've had the best, why would you change? (laughs) If you're just joining us for SciChat, we have Dr. Uh, Ganti, who's a uh, virologist. Um, we're talking about some really serious stuff, but you present it in a, uh, a humorous way, even though it is a very serious subject. Oh, can can we I have I have a couple of questions like you were on the podcast and I have one that I didn't ask you that I, I wish I did, too, actually. And then yeah. we'll open up the floor to questions. We have some people wanting to come up to ask you some questions, which is really cool. Cool. Um, yeah. The, the first one is um, you study influenza and you're all in on that. Um, yeah. As a virologist, there has to be like other viruses out there that you're fascinated by, terrified of. Um, is there some of those you could talk to us about? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I find all viruses cool. Okay. Um, <laughs> Except maybe plant viruses, but that's just not my thing. Oh, um, oh, oh. Dr. <laughs> Dr. Morgan Halane, H- H- he'll, he'll take some umbrage oh, with that. He was that a plant I virologist know. I talked to. Oh, <laughs> no. I mean, nothing against the plant virologists. It's just not, I just don't get excited by them like They're, the same way. The plant um, immune systems is bananas. Like yeah, every cell, awesome? every cell in a plant has its own immune system. I just, isn't I'm, that great? It is so hard to wrap my head around. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. Like some, <laughs> some of the things that happen with plant viruses is really cool. But like I have to like sort of keep it to one thing because otherwise I won't do anything. I'd just be like geeking out over every <laughs> cool thing that happens. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, so my master's thesis, I worked on dengue viruses. Oh. Um, and my PhD was on HPV which is the human papilloma virus. Yeah. Could, could you talk um, to us a little bit about the HPV? Is that okay? Sure, yeah. Okay, because um, um, I that's coming up in school. Like there's a yeah. there's a vaccine for that for kids. Yeah. 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 And if you are eligible to take the vaccine, please do. If you have uh, teenage children uh, who are eligible to get the vaccine, please 
please go and take it it is highly effective it is it's very it's it has a more than 95% effic- efficacy it's wow. great it's a great vaccine hmm. and um it so hpv has different types but the thing that is most concerning is uh hpv is the cause is the only cause of cervical cancer in women and also it has also now been linked to head and neck cancers other anal genital cancers so it is a, it's the cause of more than 5% of the cancers worldwide wow yeah so um and it just lives in you like i i read it yeah. you can be a carrier and it does nothing to you but then takes Absolutely. you out later in life or you can give it to somebody yep okay and so uh, most people are asymptomatic you and the thing with this virus is you don't actually know that you have it hmm. till you actually go and get tested for it hmm. so you don't have any thing like for example if you get the flu you're going to have a fever <laughs> or you're going to have a cough you're going to you're going to have some symptoms the thing with hpv is you'll get infected and you will not know it because there are no symptoms huh. And so you can you can be a carrier for decades. You can go your entire life without knowing that you ever had it. But in certain cases, this virus can get reactivated and it can progress to a place where cancer can develop. <laughs> yeah. And it is spread through sexual contact, so you will pass it on without knowing. <laughs> yeah. So it's why women over 30 are encouraged to go get a pap smear because that is the most certain way to know uh, if you have an infection or not and to just keep a watch and make sure that nothing hinky is going on. So ladies, uh, if you are delaying going to the gynecologist to get a pap smear, please don't because some you will not know till it's too late if you delay this. And uh, cervical cancer has a... Very high mortality. Right? Oh, it it does, doesn't it? It's one of the. Yeah. It's not one of the it's worst, of, but it's one of the bad ones. Yeah, it's really one of the bad ones. Hmm. Yeah, it really is. So, um, just getting go, just doing a regular checkup can help prevent it because if we catch, even if you do have early signs, like that is way more treatable than you know catching it really late where there's really nothing anybody can do. Huh. So. HPV yeah. reminds me of like those spies, the 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 communists in Russia with, or with Soviet Union or something. You know how the Americans had their big Cold War? It's, I'm speaking as a Canadian, so this is like mm-hmm. secondhand history that I've learned not through school. Yeah. Um, I like I I don't I think it's correct that the communists would send like the, they're, they're like spies and they'd pretend to be Americans for decades and then right. activate themselves. Yeah. To do something, you know, take some nuclear code back to to Soviet yeah, Union. This is, you know, like after a decade, they live as Americans. I think there's a TV yeah. show about it. Yeah, the, the Americans. The Americans. Oh, okay, I haven't watched it, but um, that's a, that reminds me what like HPV is like. Yeah, it no, just, it's bad. Like it, it, it's a sleeper virus. Like a lot of viruses can be like that. Herpes is one of them. Really? Yeah. So you can have herpes. Uh, herpes, and so there are many different kinds of herpes viruses. So one of them is the one that causes the cold sores. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. So, but again, like it causes cold sores because it's gotten reactivated. You can have herpes for years and years and years and never know it. So I'm just so, I'm. can I ask one more question? Of course. I have like, I have, I've been, have a list of every time, like the last time I talked to you, I went and looked at my notes. I had like 30 follow-ups questions. <laughs> um. It is because viruses are so fascinating. So yeah. when they're okay, so when a herpes virus or HPV is dormant, like yeah. okay, like viruses are not necessarily they're not alive, they're not dead. Yeah. What is it doing in your body? Just like chilling out on next yeah. to like in a blood vessel somewhere, like hanging out on a cell wall. Like what? What is it doing until so, it? Re- like what? You know what I mean? Like is it? Yeah. What? Is it watching Netflix? Like, what is it doing for all that time before it activates itself? It's just chilling out. So herpes is super cool. Okay. Um, 
so I mean cool because I have to say it's cool because it's like academically cool. It's not cool for the people who have it. Okay, yeah, concept, yes, okay? yeah. So I'm I'm not I'm not condoning. Uh, you know, let's go all. Yeah, it's just cool because it's yeah. You get it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I'm just geeking out because it's like awesome. Uh, but, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, so herpes is cool because it's it's a DNA virus. So what that means is that its genome uh, is uh, is DNA. It's like, for example, like for influenza is an RNA virus, so its genome is RNA. Um, but DNA viruses have this ability because we have DNA, like our cells contain DNA. So what happens is when you have an infection with something like herpes, sometimes it just infects and your body is able to clear it and it's gone, no problem, right? Sometimes what happens is these genomes, because they are made of the same stuff as our stuff is, it can basically integrate itself into our genome and it just hides out there. So it's not actually a virus. It's like the, what? Like there's not little viruses just chilling in our body. It's like inside our DNA. Yeah. Oh my God. What? Yeah. And so what it does, it is just like finds a spot and just like sort of, you know, melds itself into our, our, our DNA. And it just chills out there till some sort of thing, some sort of stressor happens. And then it reactivates itself. And now you have like, you know, a new infection popping up. So it's um, a good example of this would be shingles, actually. Yeah. Okay. So you know how you if you've got chicken pox early in life you're like you get the you get chicken pox so it's you whatever you feel miserable for a few days but it clears up mm-hmm. but then some sometimes in some cases you get later in life due to some form of stress a stressor uh, it can be many things uh, if you've had this virus just integrate itself you can get something which is like which is shingles you can just it just comes back. And it's way worse when it comes back. Because oh. Now it's playing all sorts of stuff. In yeah, it. my father-in-law gets shingles occasionally, and it is yeah. horrific. Like, I... It's, it's awful. It is... I can't... It. I, I feel so bad for the guy when he gets outbreaks yeah. of shingles. Yeah, it is really bad. And so the, the thing is, there is a, a chickenpox vaccine that's mm-hmm. available. So if you can avoid getting the chickenpox, it's great. Don't get it. It's also miserable even when you're a child. Um, but there is also a shingles vaccine. Hmm. So please go get it. If you are eligible and able, please, please do so because it will help you to not be miserable, um, huh. you know, in life. So, um, yeah. And so it's sort of like this reactivation phenomenon that is very common. Uh, it's actually called reactivation. So a lot of these viruses undergo what we term latency it basically goes to sleep um so these d this dna just like hangs out in our dna and it just goes to sleep <laughs> till something wakes it up yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's something wakes it up and now it's like mad because it got woken up and now it's going to cause problems for you and then then that's when it hijacks your cell to make more of itself right yeah. like it, it gets into yeah. all of our machinery within each cell and now it's just everywhere and now it's just worse than ever because you woke it up from its slumber <laughs> Sounds like Adam when I wake him up on Saturday too early. That's our teenage son. I'm like, Adam, wake up. Yeah. No. Teenagers are grouchy when they wake them up and they don't want to be woken up. But yeah, this is just like hundred, like just hundred times worse. (laughs) Ooh, ooh, I don't want to. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be around a hundred times worse teenager waking them up on a Saturday. No, you don't want that. You don't want that. Um, I have one more question before you. And then there's some folks that would like to ask you a question. Um, Can you talk to us about Ben? Oh, sure. Okay, because I love Ben so much. Yeah, <laughs> yes, he's the best boy. Yeah. What? Yeah. What's? Who is Ben? What's Ben? Ben is Ben is my dog. He is seven years old. Uh, he will turn eight in December, so I'm very excited for his upcoming birthday. And he is half Great Pyrenees, half Saint Bernard. Um, he weighs 110 pounds and he's a big fluffy fluke monster. He's a bear. Everybody say, when I, when I take him out, everybody's like, he looks like a polar bear and he does look like a polar bear. 
and he's awesome. And <laughs> I love him so much. He's the cutest <laughs> freaking face. Yes. <laughs> he has the best face. I, I think that he and Bunsen would be best friends. I think so, too. I think so. Yeah. He's bigger yeah. than Bunsen, though. Like, Bunsen <laughs> is big, but Ben is bigger than Bunsen. Yeah, but I think he's so gentle, and he's so, like, calm, and, like, he's just the sweetest boy. And he loves people, and he loves making new friends, and he loves new... He loves dogs, and he loves kids, and he's great. Oh, oh yeah. that's so good. He's the best. Now, I know you, you have to work in a lab and you have to crunch a lot of numbers. Um, during the mm-hmm. pandemic, did you work from home? No. So no. I worked. I was on lockdown, like mandatory lockdown for three months. Yeah. In 2020. But I've been in the lab since June of 2020. And we've been working fairly nonstop since. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So you got yeah. I was just wondering if you got to spend a little extra time with him. Oh, no. Ben was very like um, he was not a. Uh, pleased with me staying at home all the time oh uh, no <laughs> yeah he was just like why are you here yeah he um i am way more bonded to him than he is to me oh <laughs> <laughs> like he he wants on most days he wants nothing to do with me he's like go away leave me alone he has a he very much has the personality of a cat <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah so he, he is not interested He's like, fine, whatever, you, you're here to feed me, and that, that's pretty much your job description, <laughs> and that's fine. Uh, and you can go now. So he was not, he was very confused about why I was at home. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Like, that's continue, funny. Like, you're never here, go away. So, um, uh, yeah, so he was not amused. Uh, because I kept, yeah, because I kept trying to, like, hug him, and he wanted me to do it. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I heard that, that that's funny. I've talked to um, some cat, uh, some uh, animal behaviorists who study yeah. animal behavior. And it was like so, for the pandemic, it was actually really bad for some cats mental health, having their ho- owners home all the time. Because, yeah, um, you- yeah, there's just too much humans and too much yeah. affection for some cats. Yeah. They're so like, I don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was just like, why? Go away. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, he uh, currently is uh, trying to get my attention by chewing on a sock. So, <laughs> oh, I, yeah. w- I want to. He is he is a dog of the the guests I've interviewed on the podcast. I would I would love to meet your Ben. He just yes. looks like a giant sweetheart. <laughs> he is he's very very sweet. He loves everybody but me, and it's like hysterical to watch because he's not as excited to see me as he is about excited to see other people and I'm, <laughs> I'm the one who feeds you yeah so um yeah but he he takes me for granted a lot like him and him like it's fine <laughs> Yeah. Well, just quickly, my wife, uh, she's now up here as the co-host. She had uh, Meet the Teacher Night today. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it's good to see you back. Uh, my co-hostess with the mostest. Um, she <laughs> taught at home. She taught online for two years during the pandemic, yeah. and the, the dogs do, grew hopelessly attached to her. Um, and I didn't think that Beaker was really missing you all that much, but now... If you sit on the couch, Beaker stands on top of you to try and get as close to you as possible. Hey, Chris. Yeah. And I was just thinking of days that um, you had off because you had um, like days in lieu. And I'm like, what are you doing here? I yeah. was kind of like Ben. Yeah. Like, you wanted to get rid of me. Go back yeah. to school. Go away. Yeah. yeah. So I'd go like tinker on like I'd go 3D print stuff and things like yeah. that. I was like, I better get out of here. Chris is upset. I'm oh. home. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> It, we work with different different divisions, so um, what would happen is I would be still teaching, and you were just going around the kitchen, like doing stuff. About, <laughs> I'm trying to teach. My it's playing class. video games you're or like, something. You're like, oh. where's the this? Where's the that? Where are my shoes? And it was kind of distracting. Yeah, I think that's why I got into. I think that's how I built three of my costumes during the pandemic. Was just. Uh, so I didn't annoy you while you're teaching. Okay. But anyways, let's, um, let's open up the floor to questions. We had some people who wanted to ask some questions of you. So if, <laughs> if you would like to take part in the question and answer, um, aspect of side chat, you can request to speak. Um, if you're shy, you can, um, put your question into, uh, the, the, the chat box. Now, if, 
if I don't recognize your account, you may not get up to speak. And that's just to keep this a safe space. So Bez, uh, Bez had a question. Uh, Paula has one. And then Catherine is after that. And then I'll check through chat. Uh, Bez, thank you very much for waiting. Uh, go ahead. Well, do you hear my dog talking to me? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> okay, well, too bad. That was, um, I love dogs and um, we're dog lover house. So, but my question is around viruses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, doc, Dr. Ganti, I think the, um, the easy one, now they're getting excited, is mm -hmm. what, um, as an adult, which, how do we know which vaccines we can take for things that may be dormant in our bodies to mm -hmm. combat them if they ever come up? Where, where can we get that magical list? Oh, um, so your general physician will have that information. Mm -hmm. Because some vaccines are only, you're, you can only get them for certain age groups. Like uh, there's certain vaccines you can only get as a child. And then there are certain vaccines you can only get as an adult. And, you know, there are different age things that uh, are important. So um, I would also recommend um, the CDC's website has all the information about what vaccines are eligible, you're eligible for. Um, it also will depend actually from country to country. Different countries have different requirements and like different availability options, honestly, um, because also it's a question of um, price. Some, some vaccines are not available free through like governmental programs and you have to pay for them. And um, yeah, so it, it really does depend from one place to the other but if you're living in north america most vaccines will be available through you to you through uh, your or uh, you know um, just your insurance if that's your system yeah okay oh, no, the, yeah the, those um, and then um um before i get to my polio question what um will um the coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, will it be like the flu for us where we're every year have to get vaccinated and, or is it a lot, it's not the same as the flu and it's quite different and more severe. What, what's your take on, um, uh, an opinion around that? Yeah. So the current, uh, guidance seems to be, and I think that's where we will be for at least the next few years i want to say is that you'll get have to get an annual shot uh like the flu shot so i would just recommend is when you schedule your flu shot just schedule your covid shot and yeah just get it together that's the other thing you can get them together nothing will happen there is okay. absolute no problem in you getting a flu shot and a covid shot and a tetanus shot on the same day it's fine okay. Okay. It's absolutely fine. Yeah, it's uh, um, uh, interesting enough. I, I went and got my COVID shot and forgot to get my flu shot. And I came <laughs> down with, with the flu and I haven't had it in years. <laughs> oh, no. Bez. <laughs> yeah. I mean, rough. I, I don't like getting the flu. No. No, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not fun. It's mm. really not. But yes, this is just PSA for anybody like flu season's coming up and people are going to be going in to get their flu shot. And uh, also PSA that the updated variant boosters are now available. Um, and I think they should be available everywhere now. So if I would recommend that you go also get your variant booster and get your flu shot while you're at it. And then you're done. You just It's just one visit and you're good to go for a year. Okay. No, no. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. For my last question, but I will have like, like you, but since you have 31 sub questions, but uh, <laughs> just around polio, you know, I'm a Rotarian and our signature project is, uh, you know, the eradication of polio. Yeah. Um, the only two states as of, or uh, countries uh, is uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan. Um, and it's hard in those countries. They don't really yeah. want you there. And sometimes they kill the, vol you know, the workers that give the drops, yeah. you know. Um, and um, r recently, um, and, and, you know, it, it's not just like you can declare you're polio free. There's like right. a three year waiting period. Yeah. 
<laughs> and then if another case starts, yeah. uh, don't you have to start the clock again or something like that? You know? Yeah, I mean, it, it does take, uh, I mean, you some if you have like one or two cases, it's not really like considered a problem. But if you have a cluster of infections, then yeah, it's going, it's going to sort of cause a oh. review of, of oh. your status. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, and then there was uh, somebody traveled to Mozambique mm -hmm. um, and it showed up there from a, a one, either Afghanistan or Pakistan. But okay, I'm, I'm going to get home here. Uh, so it showed up in New York and yeah. it came mm -hmm. on my radar really quick because yeah. the individual traveled to New York City to seek care. And um, and then what, what I've heard or seen through reports is that, you know, paralysis took place and then it showed up in the wastewater. Mm. Um, yeah. Really? Oh, yes. Now, to me, that was a big deal, but I immediately went to CDC website and all they were talking about monkeypox. I didn't really see a lot until somebody said that recently New York State uh, declared some type of emergency. Yeah. Um, but what what can you tell us? Um, you know, talk to us uh, because I don't remember polio. I re all I remember, you know, I was born in 69 and I see my uncles who have this ugly scar on their arm or it looks like a dimple or, you know, a circular thing. Um, I didn't get that, that type of scar. Um, but tell us, you know, how concerned or should we not be concerned of polio here in the United States? Yeah, so the circular scar thing you're talking about is the smallpox vaccine. Uh, polio vaccines are always given as, as oral drops. Um, so um, I, I think New York State, as far as I understand, has declared uh, sort of like an emergency thing where, while they assess the situation. And I think that is a precautionary measure. It's just so that, you know, they're on top of things. Um, I think everybody gets the polio vaccine here uh, when they're children. So I think you should be okay. Um, it is a question of, um, I haven't seen the latest data on like surveillance and what is happening in like, it was it just a cluster of cases in a particular place or is it? As far as I know, it's not really spreading anywhere. Like, it's it's just contained to, like, a few cases. But it's still concerning because you don't want that. You don't... Because it'll spread very quickly if it does take hold. Uh, but the thing is, if you were vaccinated, I don't think that there is immediate cause for concern. Hmm. Should we seek to be vaccinated again uh, just as a precautionary me measure or no or not? i think i think the polio the thing the the good thing about polio is that if you're vaccinated because it's a three dose regimen and you get that as a child and once you've completed that you are immune for life hmm. so yeah so it's one of the great things it's it's the same case with the measles it's the same case with rubella it's the same case with the mumps is the same case with uh, polio. Is the same case with smallpox. If God parents... forbid we need that back, Doc. Yeah, no, but the good news is these are all preventable things if you just get vaccinated. You don't hmm. have to do it again. And it protects you for life. Hmm. Well, I... I um... Like the flu, I don't want to get polio. No, I don't it's, think you want to. It, it, I think it's horrible. Can you explain, you know, us that really haven't seen it because it's been eradicated from the United States since, yeah. I think, 1973. Can you explain what happens? What is the iron lung and all that good stuff? Oh, yeah. So polio causes, um, it can cause para paralysis and it can cause a breathing issues. Like you, you... If you recover, sometimes you get uh, deformations in your extremities and that can cause, uh, you know, uh, mobility issues as well as like just in general paralysis. And people have required being in the iron, iron lung because they weren't able to uh, breathe by themselves. Uh, so it can be very dev devastating uh, for people who get severe polio. And it is completely preventable. That's the thing that... The, 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 the thing to remember is it, it is completely preventable, but there is no treatment. Nope. So, yeah. If you get, if you get it, you get it like this. If you get it, you get it. And if you're lucky, you'll, you'll come out unscathed, but 
most of the time you are not so um i would recommend when and the thing is there is such an easy way to prevent it in the first place so why do you want to get sick there's no reason to get sick <laughs> yeah Bez, no, great, I, I, Bez, great questions. Yeah. I'm sorry to wrap you up, but we've got uh, more people wanting to ask questions. Is that okay? Um, oh, uh, yes. I, I'm sorry. I could have 20 other questions. I know. So, yeah, I totally understand. <laughs> we are so lucky to have the doc in the space tonight. She's so good. Um, oh. um, doc, how much time do you have? Do you have another 20 I, minutes to answer questions yeah. or do you have to go? No, I'm fine. You're I'm okay? Fine. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, Bez, I'll circle back to you if there's time at the end. Um, and just personally, so people people know my grandmother contracted polio the year the vaccine was available. She oh. lost the ability to walk. Yeah. I only knew her in a wheelchair. Um, so she could not move her legs, but they were inflamed and painful her entire life. Yeah. Um, she lived a pained existence yeah. for 30 to 40 years. Like it was just, yeah. that was what happened to her. Yeah. 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 Rough go. Yeah. Yeah. Really bad. Mm-hmm. Um, Go, go, sorry, go ahead, Doc. I didn't mean to talk over you. Oh, no, no. I was just going to say that it's really bad when when people who suffer through it and you really don't want yourself or or, and the, or the people who love what you don't want them to watch. You don't want to watch them go through that. And it's so easy to like prevent it. It's really nothing. You just take drops. You just give drops to your kid. It's it's really, really easy to do. And I, I don't think we should not do it. It is. Hmm. Yeah. Chris, did you have a comment before we go to Paula? Well, I do. Just so you know, I put the two questions that were in the chat up into the nest. Oh, okay. Um, so we can do Paula and then a nest question, maybe. Okay. Okay. Over to Paula. Hey. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Um, hi, hi, Dr. Happy Dr. birthday, Dante. Paula. Oh, thank you hi. so much. Happy birthday. Yes. Thank you very much. Happy I really appreciate birthday. it. Happy birthday. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, it was a big one today. Oy. But anyway, um, I love your Ben. I think he's really oh, cool, too. And, <laughs> he's so and, good. Um, I'm sorry, but Bez kind of like uh, stole my thunder here. I was going to ask about polio. So I'm like kind of thinking in my head what else I could ask. But maybe it would be something like um, if we get if we had chicken pox as a child. Yeah. And now how did is that part of that shingles like in that virus that's in you? Or is that something like you said that we have some viruses that are like inactive in your body. So what? What does the cor- what is the correlation between chickenpox and shingles? So shingles is basically a reactivation of chickenpox. Okay. So in some yeah, so in some cases, again, this doesn't happen like a hundred percent of the time, right? Um, so if you've had ever had chickenpox, it is possible that later in life you might develop shingles. Again, it's not hundred percent. Not everybody who has chicken pox will develop shingles, right? right? Um, but it is possible. And uh, the thing is, we don't know why some people develop it. It is like the virus was there and it didn't completely get cleared. And something happened to just wake it up. And it and now it's causing shingles, right? Uh, so again, you can go your entire life not developing shingles at all. And you can sometimes be unlucky and you got it and it's awful. Yeah, I know some people that got it and yeah. they say it's it's horrific. It's, it's, it's awful. awful. It's awful, awful, awful. Oh, oh that's it's just bad. and I'm sorry about your grandmother, Jason. I think yeah. that was such a such a sad story. Well, it um, it colored it colored how pro vaccine my family is, right? Yes, so, yeah. I can imagine. That's mm-hmm. what I was going to say on this backstory of polio. We're seeing an increase even, I live in Connecticut and in, in US, United States, and, and um, like Bez was saying, it in New York, but we're seeing more cases in Connecticut. So it's like, why is this all of a sudden starting on the uptick? Is it because people aren't getting vaccinated or they think that the, it's that, um, what do I want to say, like that blank area between the people that did get vaccinated and the ones that don't, like if they were born after a certain time, which I think you kind of answered. So I don't I don't want to repeat what you had said, but um, I just kind of wonder why this uptick. Is it because people just don't want to get vaccinated? Yeah. So there are people, especially now, it's called it's this thing which I uh, it, it's extremely frustrating as a person who is part of like the health system is that this is so unnecessary 
it is so unnecessary and it is totally preventable and just because some people have misguided you know they have some misguided beliefs or they've heard something wrong they are putting the lives of their own children and the lives of the people around them in danger and it's awful and it really like it's it's very frustrating it's extremely frustrating because i know i i come from india like i've lived there i i grew up there and i know there are places like india eradicated polio very recently very recently and that is only because everybody was vaccinated like they people come to your house to give you the vaccine like that's not even like i'm not just like saying that it they literally do they will literally come to your house to give your child the vaccine because they w- do not want this and you see places where they would really want this sort of an effort and here you don't have there everything is available and you, we live in such a privileged place and and the fact that people are not you know taking advantage of that and it's, it's just it's awful i just it, it it makes me it makes me very sad and it it's yeah. Sort of, yeah it's it's just it's just so un- i know un- it's frustrating un- right it's frustrating on your end i'm sure so but listen thank you so much for yeah. answering my question i'll let everybody go thank you everybody for my birthday wishes i really oh, yes. appreciate it yeah and, uh, <laughs> have a good night happy birthday again paula <laughs> yeah. thanks so much jason Okay, so Chris wanted to go to a question in the nest. I actually brought Gia up. Gia, do you want to ask your question that's up in the nest? Um, or did yeah, you want to ask your that. your your dietary, your your dairy question? I don't know. And then we'll go to yes. Catherine after. Go ahead, Gia. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Jason. Uh, hi, Dr. Kitaki. All right. So I hi. left some questions up in the nest. Uh, I'm a huge fan. Uh, oh. All right. So the other question that I wanted to ask you is that the relation of vaccination towards allergy, food allergies. So last year I enrolled in this fitness and diet program uh-huh. and we were, uh, we were exercising, we were doing everything. And then I started developing a cough. Okay. And uh, we were drinking whey protein, protein powders, a lot of different products. So I was doing very well, but then I started developing this very dry cough and it kept progressing faster than the average rate of a, of a dry cough. And there was no flu. There was no cold. I was very healthy and active. It's just the cough. And the cough progressed to a degree where I couldn't sleep. I couldn't yep. talk. And then my when, when you have a severe dry cough, your back will start hurting badly. Oh. Mm-hmm. So so then uh, it was vaccination time. And I took my second dose from Pfizer. Two, yep. three days later, the cough completely disappeared. Okay. And and then I know I was I was really shocked. So I thought maybe I had something that was a viral infection and then the vaccine kind of took care of it. Right. But then a couple of months down the line, the cough came back again and um, I took another. Uh, I don't. Rem- yeah. And then I realized I was actually allergic, severely allergic to whey protein. Yeah. So then you can imagine my my surprise when I realized how the, a viral vaccine like the Pfizer vaccine, like the COVID vaccine, kind yeah. of eliminated that. And I looked for it everywhere and I couldn't find any relation between the two. So a, a year later, here I am, I'm still confused on <laughs> what happened. Until today, I still I still get the cough if I take anything with whey protein yeah. in it. Yeah. So yeah, this is my yeah, question. That's your question? Yeah. Okay, so um, uh, I would. Uh, there's something called, uh, there's a correlation but not causation. Uh, it's a thing we scientists like to say often. If you sometimes if you put two things together, it looks like they have meaning together. They really don't. So what has happened, and the simplest explanation I can give to you is, you were allergic and you still are allergic to whey protein, uh, and that is what was causing your cough because you were getting a very severe inflammation, and that was what was causing your cough, right? And because you didn't know and you're still taking the whey protein, it was, it slowly builds up. Like your, your, the allergies as with any allergies will take time to like come to a point, but then they sort of ramp up very fast. So uh, that's what it is. And the minute you stop taking the whey, it it goes away. The thing is that when you took your, um, when you had your, vaccination it ramps up your entire immune response and that sort of drowned out your inflammation response. oh cool <laughs> so that 
why it sort of felt like it went away but again it was back because you were still taking the whey protein so the 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 what is causing your dry cough symptoms is the whey and it has nothing to do with the vaccination that was just coincidence <laughs> Okay, well, thank you, because I've yeah. been bu- bu- puzzled for an entire year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe I should get another shot for no, COVID. No, no, I'm no, joking. No, I'm no. joking. <laughs> yes, yes, you should go get another shot. If you've not taken the variant booster already, please go and do mm-hmm. that. I did, uh, I did. I'm but, a scientist, yeah. and I took all my vaccines, and Good. I'm a vaccine pro. So, yeah. I'm so, so you're not recommending yeah. Gia take, like, a shot away and a shot of Pfizer, a shot <laughs> no, away, a shot of Pfizer. That. Okay. No, that, is, that won't, will not be helpful. Okay. <laughs> not helpful. Uh, yes, not helpful. Talk. Okay. Just clearing okay, things got up. It. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Thanks, yeah. Gia. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Catherine, thank you for waiting patiently. You're up. And then I believe Stephen and then Laura. Catherine, did you have a question? Yes, I did. Hi. Hi. I'm so glad I was listening to this podcast. Oh, I'm glad. Well, uh, you're talking about the smallpox and stuff like that. And as soon as he talked about the vaccination, I ran in and I looked for my smallpox vaccination scar. And I have one. Oh, you do? Yeah, that's because I'm old enough. <laughs> <laughs> and well, that's great. Yeah, well, back in the day, we just got vaccinated for stuff and nobody yeah. questioned it or argued with it, right? Yeah, because it's the right thing to do. <laughs> right. Also, I have great Pyrenees. Oh, I love them. Yeah. Uh, I had Duke for twelve years. Oh, and I know what you mean. They're kind of aloof. Yeah. And I have a lady. She's a fifty percent Great Pyrenees and fifty percent Golden Retriever. So she's oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, she's perfect. Oh, Sweetheart dogs. Yeah, they're amazing. <laughs> And I was also going to mention the polio, but that's been gone over already. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I actually, uh, I've been vaccinated for the coronavirus and everything else. And, mm-hmm. but I was kind of curious. I read some stories about, because I read a lot and mm-hmm. about there are still people that are in lung right now. Yeah. There are people in places who, have not been vaccinated against polio and they are in a very bad shape. It's it's what frustrates me because people who have the ability and the sort of privilege of having everything available uh, do not take advantage. And there are places where people would are suffering because they don't have access to all of that and it's awful. Yeah, it just sounds like a horrible way yeah. to live your life. My grandparents on my um, mum's side told me stories of Alberta. Um, they had there was a polio outbreak in Alberta, and they canceled weddings, and everybody was terrified because no, there was awful. nothing. There was no vaccine against polio. They were just living in fear of this thing, and not a lot of people had advanced education, right? Because a lot of people dropped out of school to go work on the farm, and. Um, they were just living in fear of this virus. And then the polio vaccine came and it changed everything, at least for a lot of people in Alberta. Um, didn't get to my grandma on my dad's side in time though, unfortunately. Yeah. It, it is what it is though. Catherine, thank you for sharing your, your story. Um, and also that your pets. Yes. Always happy to hear Bernie's stories. (laughs) Very funny dogs. Yeah. Okay, we'll go to Stephen and then Laura. Stephen, hey, how's it going? Long time no talk. <clears throat> Greetings, Jason. How can they hold Dr. Kataki? Hi, hi. Right. So um, two simple questions that I'd imagine everybody in the room is wondering. What halted the uh, sequencing of the P53, P53 into the human genome? And uh, what? how did we sidestep H1N2 going back uh, a decade? So uh, two, two easy oh, questions. Oh, man. Very interesting, very niche question. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, so I, I think I, if I understood correctly, your first question was about P53 and the human genome. That, that, yeah, that's correct. I, I mean, um, in the papers that, that well, what you can find now, it, it looks like it's a, a, a magic bullet in, um, in securing the human genome to be resistant to cancer cells. 
Yeah, I mean, it's a tumor it, protein. Is that right, Stephen? Yes. Yes. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So uh, a lot of my um, so p53 is one of the proteins that it's a tumor. It's a tumor suppressor, uh, and it is inactivated in a lot of cancers. So it and so it's why people think that if we can somehow control that, we can um, like sort of miraculously cure cancer. Um, but uh, I'm sorry to sort of say that um, that is not the be all end all. Um, and P53 is a big target of a lot of research because it is suppressed in so many cancers. And it is definitely one of the very important regulators. But there are so many other factors and so many other proteins that play a role in the transformation uh, through ca- the different cancer stages and the actual progression to cancer. Now, cancer is not an overnight thing. It just doesn't happen. It's an accumulation of multiple things. So, um, again, it's, it's, it is uh, not never just one. It's not that one thing goes wrong and, you know, just suddenly like you're developing cancer because otherwise we would all have cancer and because things are going wrong in our body every second. So this, the, the problem, so our body is fascinating because things go wrong all the time, but our body fixes it. The problem comes is when it's not able to fix it anymore. And that happens because so many things have gone wrong that the body just doesn't know that something's gone wrong. So it can't fix what it doesn't know. So uh, that's how cancer develops. It's why cancer is relatively rare, I want to say, in comparison to the human population. So, yeah. That, does that answer your question about P53? You know, I, it, it doesn't fan the propagandist spark that uh, lies within in me um, against Big Pharma, but <laughs> that, it, it's an answer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, P53, definitely, if you could get a handle on it, would help a lot. But again, it's not going to be, it's not the magic bullet that people 20 years ago thought it would be. So uh, the other question was, how did we sidestep um, H1 H1 and and 2 Yeah, uh, we got lucky. (laughs) Is the short answer. Is uh, The thing is that things come up all the time. Like viruses come up all the time. It's just they need to be fit and extremely novel and extremely um, sort of adapted to the human system for them to cause any real havoc. Uh, And getting all of those three things in one virus at the exact correct time is is rare. It's a good thing it's rare. We do not want to be dealing with pandemics every other year. It would be awful. So... uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's why this whole thing of like, oh, we just sort of like one day like it came up out like I just we just invented this virus and it just sort of no, it, it, that's really not possible to do. So um, Mother Nature is a much better scientist than any of us would ever be. So I think it is always it's it's a trial and error, permutation and combination over decades and sometimes millennia. So, um, was it just yeah. not as contagious doc? Like with, uh, I'm trying to remember that was after, was it a type of swine flu? Like it came after swine flu. Um, um I'm just trying to remember. I'm trying to, I'm trying to like see because H1N2 circulates in pigs. Yeah. Like it's Okay. I'm, I'm yeah, no, I don't know as much as you, but I remember reading a little bit about this from my podcast. Um, yeah, no, H1N2 circulates in pigs, and it's okay. been circulating in pigs for a while now. So it causes influenza in pigs. There's been some spillover into human populations, mm-hmm. but not really that much. And I think one of the other reasons is because there are two lineages of flu that circulate in humans, like continuously every year. One is the H1N1, and one is the H3N2. So the H1N1, H1N2 is basically a combination of the H1 and the N2. So it's also like the human population, a lot of it is already immune to it. So it's not really that much of an issue. It circulates in pigs mostly. Hmm. Yeah. 
Interesting. That's a great question, Stephen. Yeah. Very niche. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and thank you so much for, for taking the time. Well, really, really uh, shukriya, fir And uh, happy birthday, Paula. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. <laughs> okay, um, over to Laura. Laura, do you got a question for us? Yeah, first of all, I want to say thank you. This is a very fascinating conversation. Oh, uh, my co- it is. My question, though, is um, I had one of the shingle shots, and I mm-hmm. can't have the second one mm-hmm. because I'm being treated for breast cancer, and my yeah. doctor won't let me have yeah. a, live, a, a vaccine based on a live virus. Yeah. Is there a shingles vaccine not based on a live virus? Hmm. Uh, I'm not completely certain um, because it also depends. Are you in the United States? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what is currently being prescribed because I think it's the Shingrix. Is that the one yeah, that's being prescribed? Yeah. yeah. So I think that's the only one as far as I know. And, um, yeah, I think, I think, unfortunately, there's nothing else. Uh, we do not have options. I'm, un- I'm s- unfortunately, um, uh, but yeah, I, I, I can, I, I mean, I know why our doctor is saying don't take it, but, uh, I think you just have to wait till you finish. treatment. Yeah. I'm kind of under the impression I'm never going to finish treatment, but, um, now I open, I had the first dose. Yeah. So. Is that, I mean, I'm assuming that's helpful. Yeah, definitely helpful. You know, because um, everybody I've known that had shingles was in such immense pain. Yeah, that awful. I don't, I don't want it anywhere near me. <laughs> no, no. It's no. bad. Yeah, no, but uh, you've got the first dose and that's definitely going to help. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a- opposed to vaccines. When I found out I had cancer again, I mean, I went and got everything. Yeah. But the uh, because there's a two month wait between the first and the second yeah. shingles vaccine, I was in the middle of uh, getting tests for everything, and yeah. I had I you know dyes put in me, radioactive shit, and I was just like you know, yeah, I don't want I, I want it to go in and work. I don't want it. I, I mean I don't know. Just, you know I'm not. A yeah, I I think right now like it's not the best idea. Yeah. for uh, you to get like a live attenuated vaccine yeah. Uh, yeah because you could have some sort of like a side effect because of uh, drugs you're currently taking so um, uh, yeah so I would just hold on till you okay. are but, but you can rest assured that the first dose that you have taken is definitely working in a second. okay well that, that's good to know yeah Okay, well, I thank you very much. And like I said, this has been fascinating. And um, I don't have a, well, I have a fluff ball dog, but it's, oh. uh, it's a case hound. Oh, it's a dog. Um, oh, you got a case hound? Oh, they're yeah. cute. Yeah. Yeah, they are. She's, um, she's a sweetheart. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But, uh, yeah, well, the vet I have down here is like, you know, you've got uh, the wrong dog for Florida. <laughs> it's I'm pretty like, fluffy. Well, hello. Well, even before moving to Florida, I had gotten case sounds from Florida. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, seriously, she does the same thing every other dog in Florida does in the summer. Lays in front of the air conditioning vent, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. Lays on her, she lays on her back, cooling her bitch. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, my, ben, yeah. my pen is very fluffy and I live in Georgia. It's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, see? <laughs> and they spend their life in front of the A.C., Mm-hmm. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope you get better soon. Okay, yes. Well, yes. A- I- after um, the first four months, I've had a sixty percent reduction in the that's tumor. Great. So well, that's that, good. that was that was that's, good. Um, yeah. But um, it's in my bones, so yeah. You know, nothing really you can do but just keep on taking medicine. Yeah. Well, we're hoping but for I, you, Laura. Well, thank yeah. you. I, I well, still have I still have my hair. Well, there you go. 
<laughs> my eyebrows are falling out, but I have my head full of hair. Still figure. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the question, Laura. Um, in the chat, it did talk about uh, the question, what is the optimal time um, between the Shingrix, Shingrix uh, vaccine? So like the shingles, like between your dose one and your dose two. Sue Rudin yeah. was asking that question. Yeah, I think it's like two months. I'm, I think so. But uh, yeah, your your um, uh, GP will, will give you ex the exact uh, timing, but I think it's I think it's two months. I think it's recommended two months. If I'm not missing him. Awesome. Thanks for answering that question. Chris, thanks for catching that. Um I missed that. And it's right up in the nest in front of my face. So <laughs> <laughs> um I think I think we're gonna wrap things up. The uh, this we've gone twenty minutes over and um the doc's had a long day and been super gracious with her time. Oh, it's oh this is fun. You, yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah. Again, I've got I, I've got like a list of questions, twenty long, just more follow up questions and more follow up questions. Um, after you've had a rest, maybe we'll have you back in two or three months to do another session if you have the time, oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. round I, two. I'm always happy to do this. Oh yay! I'm okay, so everybody, save your questions. Um, yeah. We'll have the doc back sometime in. You know, I don't know when it will, we'll chat when, when it's easiest for you, we'll have you back. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you can save your questions and I'll be happy to answer them uh, to the best of my ability. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you do a great job. Oh, thank you. Um, so up in the nest, uh, I just wanted to mention just a little plug for some of the stuff that we've been working on ourselves before we wrap up. Um, text from Bunsen, the book that Chris and I have been working on all summer. It is finished. Um, there's, that's one of the links up in the nest and, um, yeah, it's for sale. So you can go to our website to, to pick it up and, uh, you will also as a perk be put into the text from Bunsen community, um, which is a awesome. little, which is, uh, will supercharge your, instead of just getting the ebook, you'll also get put into a private community called text from Bunsen. Okay, so that's cool. plug plug over. Um, <laughs> uh, Doc, nice. thank Doc, thank you so much for being our guest tonight. Um, Yay. You're, you're just I was so, happy. so knowledgeable. Thank you for giving up your time. Everybody, make sure you're following our our guest. Um, that would be amazing. So, yeah. as we wrap up, there we go. Wrap up music. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, thanks for joining to be the co-host tonight. How was Meet the Teacher? Was it okay? It was okay. I was very busy. Oh, well, wow. People want to meet the come. teacher. They do. That's they great. Want to meet the teacher. <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks um, to all of the speakers as well who came up to speak. Sorry, Chris, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say that I put a link in the nest to Indra's um, latest oh. newsletter. Right. Uh, so issue number 47 from the Positivity Vibe Tribe. Right. And also, Indra has a space tomorrow. Indra is our partner. Um, I she, I see her in the, the room. So I'll just quickly verbally talk about her space. Um, she runs positivity spaces, which are awesome for your mental health. She has one, I believe, tomorrow um, called the po Power of Affirmation. So I'll put that up in the nest as well. Um, we're really, really proud to partner with Indra. She's an awesome person and runs stuff that we can't run about mindfulness and meditation and positivity. So, um, do check out her spaces. Um, and as I was wrapping up, as I normally do, thank you so much for the speakers. Great questions tonight. And, yep. um, thank you also for everybody who stayed to listen and put stuff in the nest. Uh, the general public is a little burnt out about talking from viruses, talking viruses, I think, yeah. <laughs> but it's really important that we just continue to learn more about viruses. There are, they are very cool. They are dead. Yeah. They could be deadly. And, um, I think get your flu shot. Hey doc. Yeah. Get your <laughs> flu shot and get your new variant booster when it becomes available near you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Okay, yeah. we'll chat in the back end, Doc, and I, I yeah. hope I hope to see you back again as a guest because this is, I've got more questions. People in the audience have more questions. Um, Happy to answer, and I'd love to be back. Yay! Okay, yeah. so um, this Saturday we have Pet Chat. Pet Chat is our community space where there's games, there's prizes, and we talk about dogs and cats, frogs and pigs. 
whatever you have for a pet. So I hope to see yeah. you on Saturday if you like pets. Um, you're welcome to come to talk about Ben. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> I know you're very busy, though. Okay, take yeah. care. Take care, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>